Continuing on the topic of drought, we're joined now by Dr. Alex Roccatelli. And Alex, you and the team are getting questions from producers about whether they can use corn as forage given some of the challenges we're seeing this summer. Right. Unfortunately, some producers this year will not harvest uh, grain from corn and they are looking at that standing plant and say, can I use that as a forage? And the answer is yes. Okay, but of course, with some consideration, there's a, a lot of things to, to keep in mind. Let's, um, let's start with nitrate toxicity. That's what we've been talking about this week on SUNUP. Right. Uh, the main issue is exactly the nitrate as we have in Sorghum Sudan. But even before talking about nitrates, something that the producers must, uh, must have in mind is, well, if they were going uh, for grain production, for sure they fertilize it better, and this can even uh, stimulate the plant to, to absorb more nitrates, and for sure they may have applied herbicides and also pesticides. And that is something that they need to be aware. Are those uh, chemicals, uh, look at the label and see if uh, there is a grazing restriction or haying restriction according to what you had applied. Make sure that you don't have any restrictions on. So that's step one, and then what do we need to do next? So next I would say, sample and send to analysis for nitrate concentrations. And I believe that the best person to help is the county educator in each county that we have. They can help the producers to sample properly, to analyze it, and to interpret the results. So once the test results are back, then you can explore your options depending on what those results showed. Exactly, you can explore your option. And actually, like, the producers can graze uh, the corn, but, you know, the problem when grazing is do not turn hungry cattle straight to a uh, corn, a drought-stressed corn, that you had suspicious that the, there is not nitrate. First, if possible, let the cattle eat some good hay that has no toxicity and then you can introduce. And also, when talking about grazing, don't overgraze. When you see that uh, you are reaching close to 15 inches uh, down in the bottom, that's where most of the toxicity is in the stalk, so take the cattle right away when you are reaching like 12 to 15 inches of height left in the field. Another option we talked about is green chop. How about that? What kind of guidance do you have? Yes, green chop is a little tricky. For sure, you can go there, cut it, and give right away to the animal. However, when green chop, again, it's very important, keep a cut the plant around 10 to 15 inches high and always chop it an amount that the animal will eat in the next two hours. How about haying? Are you also getting questions from producers who want to cut hay from their corn? Yes, because hay is pretty much the very common here. Hay, you can also do it, but it's very important again, and I'll repeat always, keep that 15 height, cutting height, to leave most of the toxicity in the field. And are there some of those same concerns with silage? Well, silage, in my opinion, is the best option. But it's important that you make a good silage where the complete fermentation happens. Wait at least three weeks, because that's the time that is necessary for a good fermentation. And there's also an extension fact sheet that covers some of this. Oh yes, there is a fact sheet that goes pretty much more in details on nitrate toxicity. Okay, Alex, thanks a lot. Thank I'm you. sure we'll see you again very uh -huh. soon. And for a link to that extension fact sheet, as well as a way to find your local county office, go to sunup.okstate.edu.